Okay, let's go. Oh, you have to close this thing. Oh. We're sitting in the Danish uh, parliament offices, really. This is the office of the Red-Green Alliance. And uh, Christian Yule has just uh, brought us this coffee. That's what politicians in Denmark <laughs> can also do for you, which is amazing. So uh, we've just, you have just uh, received a prize at the Copenhagen uh, Town Hall, which I was fortunate to witness, and there was a little meeting. Um, it was a, it's a courage prize yeah. for your activism. Ronnie, Majid, and Stavit. Um, for basically uh, facing off uh, an uh, Israeli uh, politician, Aliza Lavi, centrist politician, um, and calling her out for uh, her complicity in crimes against humanity, um, both as a, as a, a, a um, supporter and enabler of the Gaza 214 onslaught, as well as a major a figure in the fight uh, against uh, BDS, which is called the fight against delegitimization. Can you ever say that word? Uh -huh. Delegitimization. Um, yeah, so uh, amazingly, you're, you, so you are t being taken uh, to trial in Berlin for disrupting her event in June 2017, and you're going to face that trial uh, next month, on the 4th, I think, right? Mm -hmm. In less than a month. And here, th th that's, that's, that's the state of Germany uh, suing you, and here um, a political party, uh, no, sorry, well, a politician, but this is a, 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 a co-mayor. In, in Copenhagen there are seven uh, uh, mayors, like six mayors plus an over-mayor. They all share uh, their uh, authority, you could say. And here's a mayor and a committee, internal committee, giving you a prize for your uh, courage. Let's hear uh, what, what you think of, of this experience. Well, first it's important to emphasize that um, what we did is nothing in comparison to the courage of Palestinian people who are facing occupation and apartheid every day and that are um, very courageously, if we use the word courage, uh, defy and resist Israeli apartheid every day on the Gaza, uh, on Gaza ghetto, uh, fence. So just to, to put it, to put the record straight, what we did, which is civil, uh, civil solidarity action, civil resistance action, is uh, really it pales in comparison to the bravery of Palestinian children, women, and um, and, and and freedom fighters. So uh, yeah. Um. I think it put very well. There is this, this striking difference where, on the one hand, we are being persecuted in Berlin uh, for basically speaking up for what I think every decent person should do, especially so uh, since uh, some of us, to be myself, are among the privileged group who who uh, are stand to enjoy uh, to benefit from Israeli criminal and supremacist policies. Uh, and we chose to speak up, especially in Berlin, uh, uh, about, it's not just a matter of opinion, it's about uh, speaking up against what is, what is regarded as crimes against humanity. Uh, uh, because apartheid is a very, very serious crime, which is defined as a crime against humanity on par with genocide. It means that every state in the world is obligated to fight it, certainly not to support it, but also us as individuals, and let alone those who are among the privileged group, uh, have at the very least moral obligation, if not a civ uh, civil and legal obligation, to, to, to oppose it. And that's what we did. There was an opportunity where a member of Knesset, a member of Knesset, apartheid representative, Alisa Levy, was speaking in, in Germany at the Humboldt University. And she is also the chair, or was the chair, of the anti bds lobby, the lobby against delegitimization of the state of Israel. Um, she carries responsibility for also the massacre in Gaza. She was a member of an Arab coalition at the time in 2014. So for all of these reasons, uh, we felt it was basically our obligation, it was necessary for us 
to speak up, and for doing that we're now facing trial criminal charges in a Berlin court. So this juxtaposed to the situation here in Denmark where we are being handed with an award and served coffee by uh, uh, the wonderful uh, member of parliament here. This is uh, uh, such a contradiction and we are so happy uh, and thankful for, for, being, by, for receiving this prize and for re receiving this recognition, which is, uh, Maj has put it beautifully, that you know, when we stand in the, kind of, in the front line, or when we stand in front of these things, here's the actual, actual coffee, I think. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, oh. <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 I just want to say, have, have you finished? The oh, no, no, we're going for another 15 minutes, uh, yeah. Okay, so I'll just come back after five, 15 minutes. Oh, and yeah, then, that'd be great. 15? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah no, okay. okay. I thought you said 50, oh, I was like, okay, no, no, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. By, by 30, by 1.30. Perfect, it's okay. Fine. Yeah. Great, then I'll introduce myself afterwards. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'll ask uh, uh, a question from you to me, uh, some uh, focus you use. And we think it perhaps it can be a little difficult, but she will come back. Come back and then we talk about it. It's not now later. Don't worry. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll track back just like from the <laughs> sentence before. Hi everyone, we're going back <laughs> back in time. Uh, so Magic put it beautifully that uh, he said that you know when we stand in the first line or at least when we stand in front of uh, uh, those. Uh, who are trying to harm, trying to oppress us, and so on, it is so helpful just to know that there is someone kind of standing beside you and saying, you know, yeah. just w I'm, I'm behind you, I'm, I'm standing beside you. And uh, this is how I feel today, that there is this recognition, it's kind of, it, it is really uh, empowering. Yeah. And it gives legitimacy, of Israel <coughs> trying to take that, uh, delegitimize us. It is, uh, this is how the moral legitimacy, the true moral legitimacy should be. It's humans like giving to, uh, uh, like g humans who really believe in civil rights, believe, like giving to, to us and to giving legitimacy and giving recognitions to all activists to speak the moral values and fight for courageous uh, causes, you know, and, and uh, fight for struggles, and fight for the oppressed, and fight for us to be all equal. You know, those are, those are uh, the heroes of our societies. And, or those, and those also the normal people of our society, because I believe everybody can, can be, uh, like can have this opportunity to, to uh, be in front and the fight for justice. And we're giving this opportunity because we are Israelis and, Palestine, and Palestinians, but in the meantime, we are, uh, we are, uh, we have to. But everybody else also have to join us, and that is what the uh, BDS is about. The BDS, the, like the Bipolar Divestment and Sanction, as a movement, and involved everybody. It did not, be, it doesn't, it's not a Palestinian struggle anymore. It's an international solidarity struggle. It's an international justice struggle. International human rights struggle, mm. and the causes we fight for as Palestinian, the. We fight for the dignity of everybody. Who, who, who wouldn't accept dignity, you know? Who wouldn't, uh, don't want equality, who don't, want, to, who don't yeah. want justice, who don't want freedom. I think here is, is a lesson for everybody to have to continue this fight, you know, and to, to uh, honor it. And we are honored, uh, we're honored for a normal, I believe, very normal uh, event. Well, we're very normal. What we did is very normal. It's done every day. In many cities around the world, people are fighting for Palestine, for BDS, for climate change, for environment, all in the same struggle, you know? And in the meantime, I think our recognition is we humbly taking it and we are really looking up to all our fellow activists and all this collective community of our BDS activists around the world who really make us very happy, people like Jewish Voices for Peace. People like Student for Justice in Palestine, people like Ship to Gaza, people like Palestinian committees all around the world, people like Cafe Palestine in Switzerland, people, so many, like, so many students and, and workers group, trade unions, political parties are honored and giving the same award because they are, uh, we are only representing them here to, to continue the struggle for justice until the liberation uh, of all of us 
and mainly the people here we are talking about the liberation of the Palestinian people and them giving their uh, human rights, which is something very, very simple. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. Thank you, Majid. You know, I, uh, as I hear you uh, speak, mm -hmm. um, there are two comparisons now yeah. going on in my mind. Uh, one of them is what we just mentioned, you know, the, the, the honoring uh, of a, an, a, a serious office in Denmark, in Copenhagen, against the uh, basically uh, attack and and uh, on on your uh, quite an ad hominem attack, you know, attacking you as anti semites basically uh, in uh, Germany. Mm -hmm. But there is another. The third comparison is Gaza, mm -hmm. where you come from, mm -hmm. because um, and some people might not immediately draw this comparison, but we have seen over the last nearly year mm -hmm. since the uh, Great March of Return protests mm -hmm. have started on March 30th last year, mm -hmm. we have seen hundreds of uh, Gazan Palestinian protesters uh, basically shot uh, down, uh, uh, killed mm -hmm. like a turkey shoot with thousands and thousands uh, injured, uh, maimed, um, and uh, if you take the total injuries, also uh, uh, tear gas and uh, other kinds of injuries, we are almost in 20,000, I think. It's some unfathomable numbers. And basically these people have been uh, not just targeted by celebrating soldiers, mm -hmm. who even you know, sometimes filmed their deeds and celebrated, and were offered a medal by the former uh, defense minister, uh, Lieberman. Uh, but um, they have also been targeted ideologically as terrorists. Mm -hmm. Like even Razan al Najjar, mm -hmm. like immediately um, after she was shot, uh, the army uh, cropped up some malicious uh, uh, video to suggest that she was a human shield because they found some old video from some Lebanese channel saying, I'm a, like a, 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 a euphemistic, you know, human shield for these people. And, and they, oh, look at that, Hamas uses human shield. So you are being uh, attacked on all kinds of levels. And in a way, the, the suffering that, that I mean, people are paying with their lives uh, for what you are doing, not paying with your lives. But how, uh, how do, do, this, do, this, uh, do these pictures and, and, and connotations, do they... Like live in you, and how how do you feel about it? Yeah, uh, I think it's a very difficult question, <laughs> um, uh, because it's um, I think the international community tend to forget that um, the great Etre Marsh, uh, which I myself lost by a very good friend of mine inside it. It's um, it's a people march, and I I really believe that uh, the fact. How people can be gathered, you know, and live such a brutal, unlivable situation, not around me. That, according to me, is Palestinian, so nobody will just fabricate anything about me. Just read the United Nations reports of unlivable Gaza to 2020. And it's one year after, after now. And Gaza is unlivable. It's, uh, it's, completely, uh, it's completely brutal and... Uh, it's a complete slow genocide that is practiced against us in the name of uh, in the name of uh, giving legitimacy to the state of Israel, while delegitimizing us as Palestinian and delegitimizing our right and 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 stealing and robbing us from all recognitions as a human being, in um, in a word which talks about democracy and human rights um, only for certain people, and I'm sorry to say that. Uh, people like my fellow friends on my left and my right, Ronnie and Stavit, who are uh, white privileged Ashkenazis and can have all the rights in their apartheid states to do all the things that they they, they can do. And even, even in Berlin, they are uh, Still, the Jewish 
in Berlin that they have all the privilege and they are the Europeans also because they already coming from Europe, they're not at all, we're Palestinians. And we, the indigenous people in the land, we still, even though we, I left Gaza and, um, and, uh, and, and still this uh, apartheid is expanding to us. It, it's affecting the healed Israelis who are next to me, the, the Israelis that is like you guys who started to, to really uh, understand the truth and, and see the reality of colonialism and the reality of injustice. And uh, in that location, I, uh, uh, that, that expansion that we uh, are ambiguous and makes us really want to fight and want to continue to, to, to do the work that is Germany is complicit with, is to fight also Germany and to fight any uh, other countries that would be complicit with the state of Israel. Because no, uh, no countries with uh, any tendencies that are then apartheid tendency will stand with a, a state like the state of uh, the state of Israel. And uh, yeah, the gap with Gaza is, is a very I wouldn't. Uh, it's not uh, the gap with Gaza is is a place um, which uh, people only remember it when uh, something like the Great Return March happens, you know, and you mentioned Razan Najjar, which is a great, great example. I was working in, to tour her mom and her father recently in Europe, and, and it was very difficult to see her because it's, uh, it's uh, you know, the feeling of a mother and the feeling of a father. And uh, now the, herself, she's following. She's uh, strongly behind the, the vision of her daughter mm. and she is uh, helping and I hope that she will not be shot anytime soon because we also tend to forget as I said in the beginning that uh, we are uh, like that there are still people going every day to the fence being killed being injured being shot at with a uh, lot of different illegal uh, weapons that Israel is uh, testing on us you know and, they, and uh, here uh, again to the fact that people only remember when uh, huge things happen like the Razan Najjar uh, murder, massacres mm -hmm. and, and other people when they killed over 60 people in Gaza in one day, yeah. you know, when they massacred them like completely in front of the eyes of, of, the, of the eyes of the world and the world just remembers for one day. And they tend to, the people tend to forget that there are many massacres. It's not only the 2008, 2012, and 2014 Israel have been practiced mm. saying uh, this genocide and this massacres almost every two, three months. Yeah, and at least in my refugee camp or my in, in Gaza, they, if they were invaded any time they like, they have. Uh, they, this is it's a, it's a, this is a criminal state that which with a lots of uh, structural violence features and apartheid feature. Sorry, I spoke. No, fantastic. It's great to hear. I'd like to add a couple of words about Gaza. <coughs> um, even if we just look at the Great March of Return and the duck shooting, the, 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 the fact that people are being shot by Israeli snipers, Israeli terrorists, um, for demonstrating, mostly non-violently, etc. Uh, that in itself should be a good enough reason for the world to to do something about that, mm. to take action. Mm. I mean, direct action, concrete action. But uh, the Great March of Return is much more than that. It's not only about people struggling against this barbaric, uh, monstrous and criminal siege on Gaza. It's also a march of return. Return where? Return to their homes, inside what is regarded as Israel proper yeah. in Palestine yeah. 48. Mm -hmm. And for people, who basically yearn to return home and are being uh, murdered on a mass scale for doing that, that should mm. ring an alarm bell for everyone. Mm. Uh, the Great March of Return started at Passover Eve, which uh, symbolically marks mm. also the day when uh, the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising started some years ago. Uh, and the uh, deputy commander of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, a staunch anti-Zionist by the name of Malik Edelman, whose legacy will never be taught in Israel, and actually Israel has done 
above and beyond to erase his legacy. Yeah. Uh, he is regarded as a hero of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, later on a local Polish hero. He wrote a letter a few years before his death uh, to the partisans of the Gaza Ghetto. Uh, so I think that uh, Gazans are carrying on the legacy. Uh, and uh, again, speaking up about crimes against humanity in Berlin, I want to put that also in context. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's like you were saying um, in the in our meeting, uh, the meeting at the town hall, that uh, now Germany, um, it, it's kind of ironic because it's it become one of the worst place to uh, be a BDS activist. It's like the state, the, yeah, it's, so, it's like the state is is basically uh, um, uh, staunchly defending Israel against. Um, against talk of rights, basically. So uh, you say, you said that it's like, and, and any discussion of, of what we're talking about, like a, a return, the, the one state uh, solution, democracy, equality, um, this is like closed discussion in mm -hmm. Germany. It's like considered, uh, I think you said, a, absolutely taboo anti-Semitic. You're mm -hmm. anti-Semites for it. Um, so actually, you are you are doing this uh, like this is very radical in the sense that uh, in a way you have chosen if you didn't chose choose to go on trial you did your action at Humboldt University a university uh, 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 academic uh, uh, fora in which an Israeli politician is uh, given a stage and then Israeli criminal Israeli criminal is given a stage and those who challenge this are being taken yeah. to court. It's like, yeah. it's, it's completely Kafkaesque, right? Mm -hmm. But, um, so, tell me for a moment, so we get this, this fact right, as, as much as we know, mm -hmm. because some of it is, is a bit, uh, is a bit uh, foggy, mm -hmm. the state is taking you to trial, the state of Germany is actually suing you, mm -hmm. and the victim is the victim of the ac ac action? We're not too sure who is the victim. Mm -hmm. um, we would also like to be informed about uh, who is the victim <laughs> and who is the... Um, yeah, because it, it doesn't, the evidence uh, does not state who, who is the one that uh, got attacked. We are being accused of trespassing an attack. Um, although it doesn't state who is the... But that's the assault, yeah. Assault. Wait, trespassing. trespassing Wait, uh, this was an open event? Yes. Yes, yes. It was. So okay. uh, trespassing is not really it's, possible. It's, it's absurd. It's a theory, uh, theater of absurd. Um, and it's, it only goes to show um, how deeply threatened uh, Germany is and how deeply complicit it is. It is threatened by, by the success of BDS and driven by the fear of um, critically thinking individual who voice uh, their opinion mm -hmm. against um, apartheid Israel. Mm -hmm. um, now, there are these political norms in Germany and this uh, discourse, very limited discourse of what is possible to say and not to say, referring to it, concerning Israel. And um, I don't, uh, uh, in the, personally, I don't feel obliged to follow these norms. My obligation is to, um, to universal morals. Um, mm. And that's, that's my only commitment. Mm. And within this framework, it is my duty, not a matter of choice even, it is my duty to speak up, to speak up against those very horrendous crimes mm. that Israel is committing in my name, and mm. in the name of all um, uh, of, 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 of Jews in general. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So yeah. Actually, in a way, I think I think that's also a heading of your of your announcement yeah. of the trial. You are actually taking Israel right. to trial. Yeah. Israel uh, indirectly is taking you to trial via you know via Germany. But this is an opportunity for you to take uh, Israel to trial. Mm. Um, I've seen that uh, you've done an event some months ago. Uh, uh, with um, the renowned uh, scholar uh, Richard Falk, um, and I've watched it through very uh, interesting and deep uh, a talk, he always is. 
Um, and you have often referred, and I often refer to it, you know, uh, to the report that was last year uh, done by Richard uh, Falk and uh, Professor Virginia Tilly, um, uh, commissioned by uh, uh, ESQA, that's a... Uh, um, <laughs> it's a <laughs> department which... A, 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 a UN agency, yes. um, and um, they, they came out about assessing Israeli apartheid. I've read the whole report through, I've written about it, it's fantastic. Uh, and, um, but then the UN freaked out, you know, uh, what's her name, uh, Nikki Haley boasted about forcing the UN to shell the document. Richard uh, 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 Falk tells me that uh, I have referred to it as being shelved, but that it wasn't shelved, it was just taken down from the website. It exists and it's accessible. Uh, but you often refer to it and it's like, obviously, the notion of apartheid. The notion that Israel is practicing apartheid, which is a crime against humanity, right? Only second to genocide. That has become a, an absolutely undiscussable uh, issue. Um, on the other hand, it's becoming more and more difficult to ignore. Because it, it used to be, you know, the leftists, even leftists in Israel, Ehud Barak, uh, Herzog, you know, they kept saying, you know, if we keep doing this, we will become. They, we will, they will say about us, or we will become, or they will say about us that we're an apartheid, you know. But now it's like the, this two-state solution, and, and, and any solution other than the one state controlled by the Jewish state is becoming more. It's becoming more and more obvious that this is not happening. So the only uh, solution of what to call it becomes apartheid, right? It's sorry for the speech. It, it, the whole premise, the whole premise of Israel, is based on the notion of superior and inferior people, of one group that has all the privileges, rights, and to which all the resources are directed, and that, be, that owes the land, that owes the, the country and its institution, and another group which is uh, being addressed as, as inferior, and that basically has nothing. It has no civil status. Its civil rights and human rights are not secured. And um, we can speak and, and, and we can give you many, many examples of how uh, apartheid is practiced, but in principle, it is that very um, brutal separation, hierarchical separation among, among the, those who have everything and those who have not even the, the most basic human rights. Um, and um, just to, to add one, one more point, um, uh, Palestinian peoples Palestinian people are being pushed into surrendering. After decades of resistance and oppression, they are being pushed into slowly surrendering um, and, and giving up their identity. And you see that, for example, with the Trump administration uh, uh, re relocating the uh, embassy in Jerusalem. And therefore, it is ever all the more important mm. for civilians to, to, to speak up. And because international solidarity is everything that we have left, given the very bitter geopolitical conditions that, and, and the discourse that is very uh, supportive of Israeli apartheid and its, um, and its supremacist logic and ideology. Starting off with the UN report on Israeli apartheid, excellent report, if any of you haven't read it, please read it. <laughs> um, uh, our, our whole case revolves around that. Um, but even before that, uh, while Ban Ki Moon uh, ordered to shelve or, or remove the report, no, not, Ban Ki -moon, not to shelve, sorry, not, not Ban Ki Moon, but uh, uh, you meant uh, uh, Antonio uh, yeah. Guterres. Yeah. 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 Thanks for the correction. <laughs> yes, uh, while he ordered to, to remove the report, the person in charge of the UN uh, Esqua. Uh, she, yeah. uh, Rima Khadaf, uh, she, uh, she had was, uh, filed her resignation, and her ex resignation letter is phenomenal, and I think it should be taught in every Israeli school. Uh, and she said, "I cannot, mm. I cannot censor that. Mm. I would rather uh, uh, step down than censor truth, basically." 
And that report uh, is very important, first of all, because it is very well written and mm. uh, analyzes the situation very well, but also because it squarely blames Israel for practicing the crime of apartheid, mm. not only within the territory under its control, in the entire yeah. land from the, from the river to the sea, but also beyond that. Yeah. What does that mean? Also, Palestinian refugees, the six million Palestinian refugees outside mm. who have been living languishing in uh, refugee camps, many of them, the lucky ones are, would be here in Denmark or elsewhere, uh, are still under the direct influence, mm. effect of Israeli apartheid today. Mm. So that also means that actually Denmark and every other country is, is just because they have to care for their own citizens, residents, etc., mm. they have to take apartheid head on because they are obligated to, to respect at the very least uh, the rights of their citizens. So, so uh, apartheid is being practiced in Israel and beyond. Uh, so this is a global uh, issue. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, uh, Professor Falk, uh, we, had, we, had, we hosted him in Berlin a couple of months ago. Uh, it was a very interesting discussion. He was, we were very privileged and thankful uh, to him to ho uh, to, for hosting him, but he was apparently also very uh, uh, thankful towards us and you know, said wonderful things. He also said that we should refer to ourselves as German patriots, because in a sense we are offering Germany uh, a way to, to redeem itself, a way to, to overcome uh, its decades of you yeah. know, mm -hmm. uh, wrongdoing, let's say, and, 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 and you know, to, 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 to step on, you know, to step on the right track. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is an interesting angle. Um, other than that, I think that um, the fact that we, we hosted this world-renowned scholar in Berlin, mm -hmm. and uh, we couldn't, uh, it was very difficult to find a venue, but once we did, we couldn't publish the location, because we know from past experience that if we would have published it, uh, ahead of time, it would be blocked. It would, we would it would have been cancelled because this happened many times in the past. So we we had to publicize the location only a few hours, couple of hours before the event. Luckily, it was a very successful event with uh, many people. I mean, was, uh, the audience was, mm -hmm. the hall was full and so on. But um, we had to advertise it only a couple of hours before the event because this is a situation in Berlin. Mm -hmm. To the extent the situation is so dire that actually even the ability to speak up. Uh, uh, about, you know, and for a legal scholar, a world-renowned scholar, you and rapporteur, etc., to speak out, that in itself, just because he doesn't hold the correct views, that yeah. in itself would be impossible. Yeah. Yeah. And and before, uh, before yeah, I say that, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I, uh, it's very important also how the things are twisted and fabricated, mm -hmm. you know, and because we talked about the Great Return March, you know, and how it's a rights, it's a rights march, and how they try to be fabricated all the time toward a specific party, trying to make it more fabricated into it's not the people, people are driven by something else. But uh, it's crazy. I don't if we, uh, what what like uh, people who live in such a ghetto is like where should be like the, how in earth should be protesting? What should do? Will 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 they they should do? Uh, throw flowers, for example, on the Israeli soldiers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's clear, I think it's clear narrative struggles, you know, when you present some people on an injustice uh, ten tendencies directly, they would revolute. The same the, when the Jewish revoluted in ghettos in uh, Warsaw and other ghettos, yeah. the people, the Palestinian in the Pal in Gaza ghetto would revolute because it's not, it doesn't continue. But the idea with the twist also here is trying to make Gaza a humanitarian case where the Palestinian people, organic society, is trying to tell the international community it's a political case, it's never a humanitarian case. It, uh, this is what we're fighting for, is rights, human rights. That's why the, God, the Great Return March, you know, and other also the campaigns before, was very focused on right aspect. And the BDS itself, you know, come with four lines of rights, the dignity and the justice and the freedom, you know, and uh, like, it, it, is, it is right. And there we, there we are, there we, we, we should very much emphasize the importance of, of uh, making sure that, uh, to, that, that the, orga like the organic, the indigenous people of the land, you know, and the oppressed voice is heard. And, and heard everywhere, not only in, in Palestine. 
it should be heard in Berlin, it should be heard in the US, it should be heard, it should be heard here in Denmark, in any places, because we have to stop the expansion of the Israeli apartheid. And we have to stop, to, to stop every apartheid tendency, even inside Germany, between East Germany and West Germany, you know. So it's very important to really see the truth from, um, to not flip it inside our head and to not really join the theater that Israel is trying, the show. Because Israel, all of it is about, about the show, you know. They're trying to show uh, the, the, the truth in a, uh, in a, in a uh, kind of in a theater, so they flip everything. And we, if we really, we are uh, mature people, we are easily can research like any UN reports and any, and we should, uh, if you want, we want to really know, it's, we easily can Google a couple of words, you know, and then we would learn exactly what means, what Israeli apartheid mean and what Israeli yeah, come, come by. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. Yeah, we have to finish it. The yeah. politician yeah. is waiting for us.